Hi, my name is Damien Montero, and we're here at Boca.js's weekly Lunch and Learn. Now, Lunch and Learn normally are developers or other individuals, usually in the IT departments, teaching each other something that they'd like to share. The boss usually provides lunch, and uh, hopefully you're having lunch with it, as I hope that you're having this and 15-minute, 10-minute, 15-minute presentations that I create weekly at your lunch for something interesting. This week, I'd like to do something differently. And normally I code for you and give you something of interest that you might be interesting about it. Here I'm going to do a, different, a little bit different. I'm going to give you developer secrets. So these developer secrets are things I've done uh, throughout the years. Who am I? First of all, my name is Damien Montero. I've been doing this for over 19 years, 20 at this moment. And I love me some JavaScript. Hence why I run Boca.js. And if you don't know, Boca.js is an organization that meets once a month. In this case, it met last year, but it meets every single month, first Tuesday of the month. And also, we run this channel with the latest and greatest videos for you with all the latest information. Now, let's get started. Here's some information, um, some tricks that you might not realize that you do as a developer. The code is not yours. All right, I know. You've read that before I even said it. But just think about it a second. Uh, this was brought up to my attention as one particular developer uh, in my organization before I actually joined the company had a situation where they went and they went a little bit crazy as the particular project that they were been working on hard over weekends and nights to make sure that they got it working, got it right. Their baby was going to be perfect. was taken away for different reasons. Either A, because you've been fired or most likely just simply shifted to another division, another a project that takes precedence over yours. Um, this particular de developer took it really, really, really bad, unfortunately. And that meant that he, and it was a he, um, really uh, got ex mad, uh, demanded more pay um, to simply release the code as they had not released the source code to the uh, owner or something that as an owner or manager was a mistake. Uh, but regardless, it, the, it had already been done and this developer still had the source code. So they had to sort of wheel and deal with the developer about it. So first of all, remember, it's not your code. Having said that, here's an important factor. Let's just say we have a great idea, you and I, and we both work at a particular company, and we're going to say, you know what, let's work on it in our spare times, because we enjoy so much, as I do, and many of you do too, being a programmer, that we want to go ahead and share that with others, and we'll do it on our spare time. Once you do that, just remember these one, two trick, uh, two things to remember. A, do not do it on your work computer. I'm serious. Two, do not do it on your work's time. If the work can at any moment say that it was us that was paying them to do it, or it was our device that allowed them to do it, the laptop, the computer, um, different things, they can take partial ownership of your source code. So, for example, the individuals that, that before worked at Yahoo and created WhatsApp, you can look more information about that information uh, on Google, um, you would be hard-pressed to say that WhatsApp uh, was in any which way a Google, uh, Yahoo product. But the individual was working at Yahoo at the time, and if they didn't do it correctly, and if they, they worked in part of the... Uh, product in Yahoo's office or in Yahoo's computers. Yes, well, like this gentleman out in the cool coffee shop working on your work computer, on your personal project, it does no longer work belong to you. At least it's not 100% yours. So just be aware of that. Don't make the same mistake others have done. Now, mine is an island. This is something that's important for a lot of developers to really understand. And it is, uh, I believe it's, it's, it's the fault of universities and movies that showcase this unique, young, usually hip developer utilizing nothing but their own brains to create this amazing thing or hack into this program, into this network. And that's true. Nobody has ever done anything, especially in the IT world, by themselves. 
Uh, you rely on others to work with you. You work always on others' work. It is very unlikely and usually cover, kind of coveted by the senior developers, if you know what I mean, uh, that you will start on a brand new project. You are normally not assigned to a brand new project. You're usually assigned to other people's work. So just be aware of that. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Imposter syndrome. We're jumping around a little bit, but I feel these are important things. One of my favorite um, heroes is Scott Hanselman, and that particular gentleman is a speaker that is beyond belief. He can speak at any moment. He has slides ready. He has content ready. You can just sort of throw him in the middle of the desert. He'll make a great presentation on anything you'd want, perhaps this coconut that we have next to you. And he talks often about the imposter syndrome. So this is a gentleman that must be worth a million dollars, must be, uh, uh, you want him in your team, can do almost everything, anything that you want. And, and yet he sometimes feels like, you know, am I, did they make the right choice in choosing me? Am I in the right place? Um, am I equal to all these amazing developers that there are around here? Even when in other times you were thinking, oh my goodness, I'm the best person here. You will feel at every one time that you're not quite there. And everybody feels that way. First, understand that everybody feels that way. And second, everybody's wrong. No, they did not make a mistake when they hired you. They know what they're doing, even no matter how dumb you think they are. Yes, they know that you're a good programmer. And yes, they know the things you don't know. And yes, they understand that you can learn them. And yes, they understand that you will be great at what you do. Even if they find out that you weren't as great as they thought, they still need you and you are still valuable and you still do great things. But most likely, you and no one else underestimate what you are capable of. Just be aware of that. What makes a senior developer? I know, we're jumping a little bit, please. Just bear with me. A senior developer. I'm technically a senior developer. I'm a senior developer by trade. Um, it is my role title at my job. It has been my role title over the last five to 10 years at my job, always been the senior developer or senior lead or lead developer or developer architect. And what do they really mean? And at what point do you stop being a junior developer? At what point do you start being a medium developer and all that? Well, first, please sit back a little bit and understand that the difference truly is that if I am senior to your junior or senior to your mid-level, or you are higher, than me, and I'm your junior, then the difference is that the senior person has made more mistakes. I was walking into this particular company I'm working right now, and in uh, getting good friends with a particular developer, which was tremendous developer, great developer, and had the most silly of problems, as we all have. Oh my goodness, Damien, he says, this particular image does not show up. And I grab the gym image URL, and I paste it, and there you go, it works, what's going on? And I had to explain to him something of how Angular works and where the assets are um, located and what references and all that. And this is nothing that he didn't understand. And this is also nothing that he didn't think about. He had just not made the same mistake I did and not spent the last four hours, um, perhaps a week ago, perhaps five years ago, perhaps 10 years ago, trying to figure out the exact same problem. The only thing that makes us senior is we've made the same mistakes that you have just more often. And we may have been able to skip the mistakes you may have to do as a junior developer. It isn't that we know more. It isn't that we know how to search Stack Overflow better than you. It isn't that we know all the tricks and nothing is new to us. It isn't that we've been around so long that we know it all. Also, be aware that a junior developer is quite more uh, informative or pardon me, um, full of information if they are been for the company for longer. There was an individual at the company again that I worked into, which had considered themselves a junior developer. Um, but that again, I was new to the company and he had been there for two and a half years. Um, still as a junior developer, he had, he had come from another division and, and, um, um, a graduate, un, um, uh, university. And so therefore they get allowed him to become a junior developer, but he knew the system. He knew the system very well. He knew what it, people expected for it. And so when he described it, he described it in trim tremendously well. And he was a huge asset to me and the rest of the team, a tremendous asset, perhaps even more than me being a senior developer with little knowledge of the company. So just be aware of the differences. All right. Successful developers talk to each other. Now, I don't know if you've realized it. I'm not your normal shy developer. 
but that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be um, a reason for you to talk to myself or others. Now, if you talk to me, I will have no problems talking to you back. I will be more than honored to reply to any of your questions, even if you feel that they're dumb. I probably do not feel that they're dumb and will simply answer as best I can with as much information as I can. It is very enjoyable for me. Social activities are also very enjoyable for me. I love meetups and things like that. But you shouldn't think that you are new and so therefore shouldn't bother the other developers. They probably want to hear from you so that they can help you uh, sort of um, cut corners and uh, not have to spend the four hours they did trying to find the problem as we did before. We talked about that uh, you've had uh, a while ago and you can share with that with you. So don't be afraid as a new developer, especially regardless of you're a junior, mid-level or senior. We all feel like, you know, should we bother that senior developer one last time? Should we bother that developer next to you one more time? There are exceptions. There are individuals who will get mad at you or the situation. But also, even for those individuals, please be aware that those individuals may be mad simply because they are behind a deadline or have had a bad day. This is true of with anything. Uh, people can be oh, nice to you one day and mean to you the next day, and it may not be anything you've done. So just be aware of that. 40-hour work week. So again, at one of the companies I worked at, I was a consultant. I have been a consultant for many different companies, and uh, let's talk about being a consultant after this. Um, but... Um, I was asked, you know, as a consultant, are we allowed to work over 40 hours? And it was a, a fair question. And the answer was, you have to get your permission uh, from your manager. And then his reply was, well, then why am I a consultant if I'm only allowed to work 40 hours? It's common knowledge with um, consultants that you are there truly as a consultant. Technically, you are temporary, although that's never the case. And... Um, you are team work per hour. Um, at one of my works, uh, they even uh, utilized that too well. And they came to me and says, listen, Damien, we are behind. Um, we can't ask the individuals that we have as employees to work for hours, but we're asking you, if you can, to work for hours. And as a contra contractor, when they asked me that, and they were very clear, they didn't have to, you know, specifically uh, let us know, but they let me know that, you know, you would be pay overpaid for overtime. So 56 hour work weeks for me in that situation was not unheard of. Um, even just working an extra hour could be very helpful. That is almost an extra day from another developer uh, that they will gain from you and they already have contracts with you and it'll be convenient. If you're an employee and you're being worked for, uh, asked for work for extra hours other than the 40 hours that you've kind of agreed to in the fact that you are getting paid a salary, um, then it is up to you and up to the company to talk about whether you can work overtime. There may be reasons why you need to work overtime, and there are sometimes we just sort of give our give over ourselves, and and it is kind of expected on us. There are companies that pretend to uh, need over sixty hours of work from you, and they should pay accordingly. They shouldn't pay the same salary as all the other work weeks because, um, you know, you're working more for it. But Having said that, of course, um, I've worked in many companies for which I worked 40, 41 hours commonly. And then there was the release for which you, if you added it, that would have been 43, 44, 45 hours, depending on how many releases a week you do. And um, so, you know, there, there are sometimes the ask, um, and I guess uh, it is up to you to decide at what point it is too much. Uh, for me, it would be where they're asking me to work, you know, perhaps three or four hours extra a week uh, without me sort of volunteering by mistake or staying a little longer for something that I really, really just have to get off my chest and say, give me a second. Don't worry about the fact that it's uh, 6 o'clock and everybody's gone home. I just need to fix this. I just need to get this done and all that. Having said that, if you are asked to work 40 hours a week and for a reason, for example, we're about to close the office, please leave. Then be aware that you can continue that, that way and, and prepare yourselves with notes and information so that you can start the next day with your fresh cup of coffee or, or uh, sparkling water. And um, just get to it, get to, to, to work as quickly as possible. 
working from home is sometimes the dream for some and sometimes the nightmare for others. Um, it is not a um, common, uh, uncommon occurrence for companies to say, yes, you can work from home. It is also sort of considered a um, reward. Perhaps you get to work 45 hours a week, but we let you stay one week, one day a week at home or two weeks, two days a week. I have I've worked at many companies that promise that eventually I'll be able to work up to two days a week at from home that never materialize. It doesn't mean it's not going to materialize for you or for in other situations. It may not have materialized in this company, but may working on the other ones. If you do work from home, just be aware of there's easy to be distracted. There's easy to be uh, situations. People around you will kind of agree that you are at work, but not all of a sudden remember the second that they need you to help them put it in a shelf or lift up something or do the laundry. And you're like, you know, you wouldn't be able to ask me to do the laundry if I was actually at work, you know, but you are here. You're like, but my boss is going to, but he doesn't know, you know, you're going to have that kind of a situation. So just be aware of the fact that it could be fun. Um, just be aware of the fact that there are co-working spaces. I'm a big believer in co-working spaces. They allow you to work remotely. For example, when I worked for Universal Studios, I worked remotely in the sense that I did not work in their offices, but I chose to pay for a cheap co-working space, a wonderful place. Um, uh, called Sendine Spaces, um, that uh, just truly uh, allowed me to have the mindset of programming uh, of, a, of a work, uh, uh, individuals there that I can talk to once I'm, uh, it's time to have a coffee or once I want to have a lunch, and the ability to concentrate at a work kind of a place uh, the moment that, that it's no, no longer there. Uh, sorry about that scratch. Now, there are... Yes, you've read that right. There are a hundred ways to write the same code. So two things about this. There are a hundred ways to write the same code. Your way is not necessarily better than mine. And also, if you try to refactor somebody else's code or they decide that it's time for you, them to refactor yours or something like that, just be aware that that may be, especially to a good manager, a waste of time. If it works and it's going to be a fraction of a second faster, even if it's a fraction of a second time a million times, but over the million years, it's not necessarily faster or, or it's perfectly fine, right? If you have something that reacts to the user one hundredth of a second faster and it is kind of quite known that the minimum that a human can really detect a difference is somewhere around three or four hundredth of a millisecond. Um, you know, there isn't maybe a, a, a benefit to you refactoring the work. So if the work is done, it's working and it's and it's not ridiculously um, over complex or having problems or bug proof, then it may be better to leave it the way it is and continue on with other things. There are always things to work on and uh, just be aware of that. Uh, so just be conscious of that. There is no perfect way of programming. There is no perfect line of code. There is no way that that line could not be better or even worse. So um, uh, don't worry too much about that. Uh, um, you know, uh, you know, the code works and let's continue on. This is an old one. And this is a common one. Uh, one of the last ones we have here. Never ask someone else how much they work, uh, how much they make. Uh, at work. Here's the real reason. Um, the truth is, the, you know, the, the, the biggest reason is because your boss doesn't want you to understand that you get paid less or that you get paid more and he doesn't want the other person to know. And this is true and this is a, a thought, but it also is something where you don't know one's going to win. If I make more than you and we pretty much work the same way, then I'm just going to be pissed off. I'm just going to be mad. Um, I had the situation. I brought in an individual. I had been there working for about a year. The individual had my exact job. I felt the individual was less qualified than me or less of a developer than me or in, in any which way or any which factor less. And then all of a sudden, I found out that he was getting paid $5,000 more than me. And I was like, wait, that's not fair, right? I mean, that's $500, a little bit under $500 a month. And then, hey, that's a, that's my car. You know what I mean? What's going on? That's that's not fair. Why is he getting his car paid off for free and I have to pay for mine? Um, so it never ends well. So uh, forget about the fact that you're, um, you know, sticking it to the man by sharing everybody and everybody sharing your thing. Uh, you will also... Uh, find that uh, you're a little disappointed or your friends are disappointed at how much you make. 
This again has been Lunch and Learn by Damien Montero. I work for bocajs.org and we meet monthly every Tuesday at first of the month, uh, first Tuesday of the month. But we also have these Lunch and Learns every week. So please come join us for the next. Thanks again. Hope you like my background.